Things are moving along wonderfully here. I put a coat of stain on the frame itself and on the legs. And the color I chose is Ipswich Pine. It is a stain that's been around forever. And it basically makes a piece of pine look like it's been sitting in the sun for 10 years. And it really looks beautifully. Really looks beautiful. Um, on the legs where I use the framing lumber, I put one coat of stain. And on the sides of the table and the veneer of the legs where I use the number two stock, I put two coats. Um, this, these areas of the table were quite a bit lighter than the framing lumber. So the two coats really made them look very uniform. And if you didn't know there were two different kinds of woods, you would never even notice. And they look really, really nice. I'm very happy. So now what I'm getting ready to do is I'm on, just on the outside and the visible portions of the table, I'm going to put some wiping varnish. And that, basically what that is, is I have a 50% mixture of satin polyurethane and mineral spirits. And this pine will soak this up like a sponge. And what I'll do is I'll put two coats of this on as a wiping varnish. And then for the last coat, I'll sand and then I'll put a full strength coat of the satin polyurethane in and it'll, it'll make for a very nice finish. Nice thing about using a wiping varnish for the uh, first couple coats is you don't have to be overly precise. You can actually be downright sloppy with it if you want to because the wood will just soak it right up and save your uh, precision finishing for your final coats. nothing like the smell of mineral spirits in the air to remind you how close you are to getting done with the project and we are getting close things are going along smoothly now yesterday morning I put a coat of wiping varnish on here and let that dry all day and last night I put another coat of wiping varnish on it and I let that set up overnight and this morning I came in and I sanded it all smooth with a light sanding with 220 grit and then I took a tack cloth and wiped it all clean and my tack cloths are nothing more than a paper towel soaked in mineral spirits it works very well so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a full strength coat of poly, my satin polyurethane on the legs and the frame. And some people like to use foam brushes for this. I've never really been a big fan of foam brushes. I have here what they call a china bristle brush. I don't really know what that means, but it's what I've always used and I get very good results with it. Now hopefully this will be my final coat. I do have a few spots that soaked up that varnish pretty good. So I may have to go back with a second final coat, but I'm hoping that this will be the final coat. My finish is dry and it looks okay. I got a couple spots that I'm not overly happy with, so it would be fine, but I know me, I won't be happy until I do it right. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do another light sanding and put another coat of the polyurethane on there. But before I do that, I wanna address an issue that's been bugging me for a while. 
when I originally designed this table, the legs were just going to be a hollow box. And they were going to attach to the frame with what would be a mortise and tenon joint with glue. And they were going to be glued. But because I decided to do a full lamination and make things beefier, I felt the legs just had to come off. And so now they're going to be attached with screws. Now one thing that Pine does not do very well is hold screws. And I'm very afraid that over time, those screws are going to back out, making the table unstable. And for obvious reasons, we don't want that. We're going to spend a lot of time getting the table level, and we want that base to be solid and not move on us. So what I decided to do is embed some hardwood where the screws are going to go. And I'm going to use doweling for this. I'd love to use poplar dowels, but I couldn't find any. I got a guy down the road that has a lathe, and I could go turn some dowels if I wanted to. But that seems like it might be a little bit unnecessary. Besides that, I have some extra oak doweling lying around, so I'm just going to use that. And the oak will hold screws much better than the pine will. And that should alleviate that issue. I'm going to do most of my drilling on the drill press, and I have a three-quarter inch Forstner bit installed. And I got the stop set up so that it will stop about an eighth of an inch short of the outside of the leg. That looks great. I've got the two horizontal holes drilled, now I have to do the vertical hole. And for that, I'll have to use a hand drill. I got my holes drilled, and I got my dowels cut to the proper length. Now it's time to glue them up. Well, it's a bittersweet day here in the shop, and I got some good news and I got some bad news. The bad news is, I left my favorite poly brush in a cup of solvent last night, and somehow it tipped over, and now my brush is now wasted. I probably had this thing for 10 years, and it served me well, but I guess it's time to move on. Oh well, things happen. Now for the good news. The good news is that I am so happy that I decided to put another coat of finish on here because the depth of grain is just stunning, and it looks amazing. It's probably my best finish job to date, and I'm pretty ecstatic. Even more good news, it's time to actually attach the legs to the frame. And as you recall, the legs are attached with screws. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily attach the legs with clamps, get everything nice and snug. And then I'll mark locations of my pilot holes. And I'll drill the horizontal holes on the drill press. Once again, being careful not to be certain that I don't go through. And I'll do the vertical holes with a hand drill. Getting close. I've got my legs attached and I've got the slate set in place. And that is some heavy stuff. I did need to get some help with that. And the only thing left to do on the frame is to cut off these areas of the frame that protrude from the pockets. Now, I don't plan on moving this slate until I'm done with the rails, so I will worry about that at that time. But now it's time to get started working on the rails. Now, I could go ahead and buy some pre-made rails, and that should work just fine, but there's no fun in that. I've designed my own rails, or my, I should say I've designed my own sub-rails, and they're very complex. They're, there's a whole bunch of angles, and they need to be cut to specific dimensions in order for the rubber to fit on there properly and everything get the proper height. I'm going to do most of that work on the table saw and again, one of these instances where my patience will be rewarded. So I will be sure to take my time. Mm -hmm. 